Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Well, the wonderful people at Gale Force 9 were kind enough to send me a copy of Aliens, Another Glorious Day in the Core, and the expansions as well. So now I'm going to show you how to put the miniatures together and how to paint them. We'll get started in this first video putting all these plastic miniatures together. And as you can see, I've gone forward in time and I've already created them all. They're all here and I've even started painting them. But for now, let's get started as I show you how to put the miniatures together. Here are our sprues. We've got four alien sprues. They're all the same. And we've got our marine sprue. And of course, we've got an instruction sheet for the marines and another one for the aliens. Now, be very careful when you're taking these out of the box because some bits can fall off. Um, I lost the little head of Hicks here, but luckily I put it in a Ziploc bag to make sure I don't lose him for good. So be careful because they can fall off the sprue. But in general, these are pretty easy to put together. There aren't too many parts. So let's go through them step by step. Now the other thing you want to do is get your tools ready. So this is what I'm using for this project. We've got some plastic glue. Uh, this stuff is Tamiya plastic glue. It comes with a little brush inside, which I find quite easy to use. Uh, this thing is a tool for scraping off mold lines made by Citadel Games Workshop. I don't use it a lot, but it can be handy in some situations. Probably won't be using it as much with these detailed little miniatures. Um, much easier to use is just a scalpel. As you can see, be careful with these. They're very, very sharp, uh, but these are very good for basically doing what these do, scraping off uh, mold lines and also cutting off little uh, knobs of plastic that shouldn't be there. And finally, uh, you need a good pair of cutters to cut the pieces off the sprue. And I highly recommend these ones. These are by Redgrass Games. And I used to use a pair that I just got from the hardware store. And when Redgrass Games sent me a pair of these to try out, I was amazed how much better they were. They were really sharp and they just really cut through the plastic like butter. So uh, if you want a really good pair of cutters, and this is a really good thing to do because uh, the cleaner you get it off the sprue, the less cleanup you have to do with these kind of tools. So Redgrass Games, their sprue cutter, very, very recommended. So let's start with this one. Now I do them figure by figure because that way I don't have pieces running around on my tabletop and getting lost. Oh, and of course I've got here a, a cutting mat. As you can see, this one has been very well used over the years. So let's start with our instructions. The first one we're going to do is Hicks, and you can see he's made up of a base, a body, um, a gun, and a head. So let's find those bits. As you can see, they're very nicely labeled. It says Hicks here. So let's snip this off. When you're snipping these off, you want to get as close to the actual part as you can, but just make sure you don't cut off any piece uh, that belongs to the model. So. You can see, oh, these snippers are just great. They absolutely slide through like butter. And again, going through there, there's our gun piece. Um, where's Hicks? Here's his body. So here's a case in point. He's got a, a nub that attaches him to the base. So don't cut that nub off. Just cut where the sprue, the injection of the plastic comes into the figure. Another bit here. They just cut off so cleanly with these. I can't say enough about these cutters. They're just fantastic. And then the same with the base. There you go. And as I mentioned, Hicks's head fell off before. Here it is in the plastic bag. And roll his head out. Be sure not to lose those bits. So these are the bits for Hicks. Here's his body. And sometimes it's good to look for uh, mold lines and things before you actually construct the miniature. So there's a very, very faint line down there. Um, you know, I'd hardly even worry about it, uh, but at this stage, it's very easy to scrape it off. Using the edge of the blade, or one of these tools if you're using it, but I find a blade a bit better, you can just gently scrape down that mold line. And that will take off that mold line that's left when the uh, two halves of the mold, the plastic mold, meet. And just do it very subtly. You don't have to be absolutely perfect. This is the kind of thing. There's such subtle mold lines, you're really not going to see them when you're playing with these figures. You know, the only time you go to really obsessive detail about taking mold lines is if you're doing very, very special expensive figures. Well, I do anyway. 
So there you go, very easy. Now there might be a slight nub where you cut it off the um, sprue, so you might want to just carefully slice off a bit of excess plastic there. There's hardly anything there because those cutters are so good. Here's my base. There might be again a little nub there. You just want to smooth that down. You can also use a needle file for this though. That can damage the plastic around. Now unfortunately this blade is not as sharp as I'd like it. You should get a brand new blade. I've run out of blades which is very annoying um, but it's just sharp enough for the process. And be careful, don't cut your fingers. Here's our gun. Um, there's just a little nub there. You can see where I cut it off the sprue, so just slice that off. And you want to be very careful with your fingers and make sure you're putting just enough force to do the job, but not enough to lose control of the blade. There we go. Anything else won't be noticeable. There's a tiny bit there. Let's slice that off. This blade really should be sharper. Oh well. Okay, and then just check his head. Tiny little head. There's a little bit on the chin. Taking it on the chin, Hicks. There we go, the rest is pretty good. There's usually a mould line across the top of the head where the mould lines, mould sides join. Give that a slight scrape. <sighs> okay, so we've got our pieces. So the first thing probably is to stick it in the base because you want to get this around the right way. There's a nub in the bottom of the feet and you can see that fits very cleanly in there. Now when you're putting uh, miniatures in bases, always allow a little bit more space at the front. Don't sort of, you know, have him up there and have all this space at the back. Just allow a bit more because the gun is going to take up more visual space at the front. So put him back a little bit, just a bit. So, um, get my plastic glue, give it a bit of a shake. And just apply a bit of glue to the bottom of his foot, not too much. And stick him in the base there. And the good thing about plastic glue is it's a little bit tacky, so it usually you can stick it right in and just leave it. And let that dry. Now the ideal thing to do is to let each little piece dry before you do the next. I'm usually too impatient to do that, but that's the safest way. So we've got his body. The next thing we're going to do is put in the gun. Just a little bit on that knob, a nub, and a little bit on his wrist. Again, not too much because it doesn't melt the plastic to join it. And we're going to stick that in there. Oh, there's a little, I need a little bit of glue on his arm as well. There we go. So there's three points of contact there. Pop it in the hole. and make sure everything is joined together neatly. Look, very easy to do. You might want to use your finger just to wipe off a bit of excess glue if there's any, because that will appear. Now, that joint is a little bit rough. I probably could have cut down that joint a bit. Um, there we go, just a little bit of force. There we go. Now, there is a bit of a you know obvious join there, but you know these figures are gaming figures; they're not display pieces. I could fill that with a bit of green stuff later, lately, or putty. We'll see how we go. So that's the basic Hicks figure. Now we want to put his head on, and remember to refer to the instructions to see which way his head's pointing. There we go. Pop that on there. And there he is, Hicks, our first figure. Done. Very easy. I'll put that aside and let it dry and move on to the next one. Next up is Ellen Ripley herself, the heroine of the piece. And we'll cut off that base figure, the head, the gun, and the body. 
It's funny, there were quite a few threads on Board Game Geek complaining about the difficulty of putting these together. They're very easy to put together. I think um, a lot of people who don't play these types of games are probably not used to getting figures that are in multiple parts, but as you can see, it's not hard to do. So again, I've got Ripley there, and let's try this tool this time because my um, knife isn't very sharp. And with this, you just scrape the edge of the tool down that mold line. Be very soft and subtle about it. It's just got a sharp edge that takes off that, that line. There we go. It works pretty well. It's just a little bit clunkier than a, a scalpel. Again, if there's a little nub where it joined the sprue, just carefully slice that off. Making sure you don't take any detail with it, of course. So, very similar to uh, the last figure. Bit on the nub, bit on the bottom of the shoe. Pop that in there. Again, leaving a bit of visual space at the front. Or you can put the whole figure together and then put it on the base so you can judge that in a probably a better way. And again with the gun we seem to have, let's have a look, there's three contact points. There's the left arm, the nub itself and the right wrist. Tiny bits of glue and then slide it in. That's a nicer fit. Wipe off any excess glue and then a little bit of glue up there and let's put a head in and there's our Ripley figure very easy okay two down we're doing well time for Gorman here's the base the body and the head and the head has got the pistol integrated in it so there's not an extra piece clean up the pieces when you're cutting things with a scalpel, a good technique is, is to hold it like this and you give it a bit of a slight rolling motion. You just roll it off as you're slicing things off. Again, this scalpel is not sharp enough, but that gives you a little bit more control instead of just going chunk, chunk like that. You just come in at an angle and roll it off as you're cutting. As you can see, I'm churning through these. Very easy to do. Here's Gorman. So, and all Gorman needs is a little bit of glue in the top and his wrists. And then that one piece goes in the top. And his head, if you look at the instructions, is pointing towards the left. That fits in there very nicely. Ah, Gorman, you always were a Yes. There's actually an impressive level of uh, detail in that face. They're quite nice figures for the scale. Next up is Hudson. This time his head is attached to the body, so that's easy. Actually, after I've done all these, I might later on give them another pass with a sharper scalpel and do a better job. You can see there's quite a strong mould line there going over the head, so just give that a scrape. Let's try this other one. There we go. The trick is, is just to get enough of a scrape to get rid of the line but not to damage any detail. <laughs> Don't forget inside the legs. Another tip when making figures is doing a bit of a dry fit. And a dry fit is, is making sure the bits fit together before you actually um, attach, uh, before you actually put any glue on. So in this case, looking at the diagram, we know his arm is going to go down by his side. So I'm just checking to see, oh, okay, I know the angle is right before I put the glue on. Yeah, see? Now I can put on the glue, safe from the knowledge that I won't be mucking around with it too much. And there's Hudson. Next up is Frost. And as you can see, nothing complicated about putting these together. It only takes an hour or so. Actually, I'm playing this game uh, this afternoon, so I've only got a few hours before I play. Um, I probably won't have time to put the aliens together before then, but I have some aliens from a, another game. So I'm going to proxy those in until I get a time to build the aliens on camera for you. And in his case, his head just fits snugly behind the thing on his shoulder there to look down the barrel of his gun. 
Next up is Newt, who everyone will be trying to save in the first mission. Um, one of the great things about this game is that you can play one-off missions, bug hunts, or you can play a campaign. In the core set there's three connected games that form a mini campaign. Where you rescue Newt from the colonist's base and try and escape. Here's Newt, a affirmative. And she just has one arm piece because she's saluting. Let's just do a dry fit to see where that arm goes because it's kind of tiny. Just slots in behind there. Ah, there we go. Just want to move that hand forward just a little bit so that fits in perfectly. Make sure she's nicely centered on the base. A little bit more space in the front. And there's Newt. Alright, and finally there's one left and that's one of my favorite characters from the film Vasquez. And she's carrying a smart gun. So she's got two separate arm pieces. That's all the pieces off our sprue done. Actually, I don't know why I'm saying she's one of my favorite. They're all my favorite. They're all such good characters. That's why the film is such a classic because all the characters are so distinctive and interesting and they all have great lines of script to say. Now, on a gun like this, there will be a mold line running right the length of it, so just be careful to scrape that off. All right, let's put Vasquez on her base. Then we're going to attach a smart gun. There we go. There's a shoulder attachment. And there's a little nub there. There we go. Very easy, goes together very cleanly, no problems at all. They're very nicely made little figures. And there's Vasquez. You can see I'm not too happy with how she's placed in the base, so I'm just going to, before that glue dries, I'm just going to swing around a bit. That's much better. There we go. Just getting that balance of space on either side. You might want to actually, with this one, put the arms together before you put her on the base so you get that right. But that works well. And I've done all the Marines. So let's just look through those again. There's Ripley, Newt, Hudson, Vasquez, Hicks, and Frost. That's all the Marines. Right, let's move on now to the aliens. And you get four sprues like this for a total of 16 aliens. All of these sprues are the same, so I'll just go through making these four aliens and then you can repeat the same process for the other sprues. Now you could make these one at a time, but I find it a bit easier to do four at a time as they appear on this sheet. And I have a little technique for doing this uh, that makes it easy. Um, as long as you don't bump the table or someone moves things or you do, you've got to do all this in one session. And that is to cut out the pieces and then actually place them on the diagram so I know what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, follow this diagram. The step one is taking half of the bodies and adding a choice of one of two heads. There are eight heads on the sprue and each of these body types has a choice of two heads. So you get a bit of variety in there. And then step two is to add the second part of the body and that'll make up the full body. Step three is to add it to the base. Step four, you can add a tail. All the tails are interchangeable, so you can add any old one, so you don't have to be careful with uh, cutting those out and placing them anywhere in particular. Same with the arms. They're all interchangeable. You've got left and right arms, of course, but you can add any ones you want, and this is what you'll end up with. So let's get started here, and I'll just cut out all of these pieces and place them on the diagram. So I'm going to choose just the first of each of these types of heads for this example. Here we go. 
Once again, got my wonderful uh, snippers by Redgrass Games, which I just love. And I'm going to start with now that it's, it's A, B, C, and D. So for the body, I'm looking for A3, and they're all quite clearly marked. And I'll just carefully snip them out there. After I've snipped all these out, I'm going to cut off any extraneous little nubs of plastic and stuff like that. You can see I just take the piece and I place it on my diagram so I know it belongs to that. And this way I can just chop out all these pieces in one go and save myself a little bit of back and forth time. So B, B1, that goes there. Now for the heads, A2, there's two different types of A2s. And I'll just pick one, doesn't matter which one. Um, it's up to you to choose the heads and to keep track of uh, which heads you use for more variety. So you might want to use for your first set of four, one set of heads, and then for the second set, the other set of heads. So you have a lot of variety. Or you may like one particular head more than other heads and use it more often. So these are all the pieces that are on that sheet. So as I said, if you're using this te technique, make sure you do it all in one go and you don't uh, get these confused because these pieces all go together the way they should go together. And you don't want to accidentally have a gust of wind come and blow these all away. So now I have to clean up all these pieces, exactly the same process I did before with the marine model, so I won't bore you with it. I'll just go through and clean all these up um, with a scalpel. Then we'll get back to putting them together. When you're cleaning these heads, you'll probably find there's a little nub of plastic underneath the chin, which you can just shave off. And there'll probably be another piece of plastic here on this strip. Just clean that down. And you'll probably also have a very, very faint um, mould line on the top of the head, so just carefully shave that off so it's smooth, because that's the top of the glossy alien's head and you want that to be nice and smooth. When you're cleaning up these bases, you just want to carefully shave off where it was attached to the sprue so these edges are smooth. Right, I've cleaned up all those pieces. Remember when you're cleaning uh, the body pieces to make sure you get rid of any little extra nubs of plastic that are on the feet, but be careful because they slot nicely into the bases and you don't want to spoil uh, how they slot into the bases. Just any extra nubs from the sprue, get rid of those. Right, these are all cleaned up, so now I'm going to put them together, and it's very easy to do. First, I take a body piece from step one, and I get my glue, and I just put it down the spine there, a little bit of glue and a little bit at the top, and I get the spine and the head, and they just attach there along the spine, as you can see. Very easy. And then I get a little bit more glue and I just put it along the body and the spine and get the second half of the body and attach it like so. And they go together very cleanly. Just hold that together so it's a nice firm join. And that will be your alien body. Very easy. Next thing to do is get the base, the matching base. Put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the feet or the it's some sometimes it's the bottom of the feet and sometimes it's the front of the feet. It depends how it joins onto the base. Get my base and you can see it will slot in in the right place. You might want to view it from the side here to make sure that the join is clean and that it's standing at the right angle. The, in this case the back of the feet just slots into the front of the feet and means that it stands at this, ang this angle. There it is. And we'll do that with all four. It's very easy to do. And there he is, rushing forward to kill you. Here's the third one going into its base. And finally the last one. You can see I'm just making sure he's standing at the right angle so there's maximum contact with the front of the feet. There you have it. So let those dry thoroughly and next we'll put on the arms and the tail. Right from now on the tails and the arms are all interchangeable so I don't have to keep track of which models are which, it doesn't matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on the arms. So all I have to do is cut out from the sprue all of the arms. 
they're all my arms, there are eight of them of course. I just have to do a little bit of clean up. Each one of them had two contact points where they were attached to the sprue, so I just want to clean those nubs off and then just scrape off any mould lines. They're pretty subtle, but just a quick little scrape with the edge of a blade will take them off. Now I'll attach my arms. The first thing is just to divide them into left and right arms so I can pick them up quickly. And they're all in a very similar pose, so a random arrangement is fine. And I get my glue. And I'll do two arms at once, dab in some glue in the arm socket, take my two arms, just pop them in. And once they're both in, I can then arrange the pose. So for this guy, since he's standing up straight, I'll just relax the arms a bit. Put them down there. You can arrange these in any uh, angle you want to. Be back a bit, there we go. There he is. Let's do another one. This guy's lunging forward a bit more, so maybe we'll put his arms outstretched. You've got 16 different models to do, so there's plenty of variation. Just make sure both arms are pressed in completely. There we go. You don't have to match up the arms perfectly. In fact, it's more natural, really, if they don't match up perfectly. There we go. Let that dry, and then I'll do the tails, which are just a little bit more fiddly and need a bit more drying time, so I'll make sure that everything else is dry first. Right, now that's thoroughly dry and there's no chance of uh, arms falling off or anything, I'll do the tails. That's the final step. So these, again, are interchangeable, so I can cut out all the tiles and not worry about which ones go with which bodies. Once you've cut that off, you'll notice there are four heads uh, left on the sprue. They're your alternative heads. So when you do your next sprue, you might want to use those four heads to give yourself a bit of variety. Or you don't have to. Uh, you can use whatever heads you like. So here are my tails. I'll give them a little clean up. These little spikes at the end will have little nubs where they were attached to the sprue. So you just want to clean those up nicely. And also make sure there's not any extra stuff around the nub where it's going to attach to the body. Here are our tails. You can see they come in two different types. Uh, these two point downwards, these point upwards. This part of the model could have been engineered a bit better. If we had a longer piece that stuck into the body, it would be more secure. As it is, that sort of just sits there. Now, the hole is a bit small. It's just a nub. So what I'm doing is just, and this is optional, you don't have to do this, but I've got a pin vise if you have something like this, and uh, your poor alien can endure the indignity of having this uh, wide... <laughs> Widening, the, sorry, I'm, I'm a 12 year old, I know, widening the hole at the back a bit, um, just to make it a bit more snug. Sorry about that alien. Well, that's what happens when you kill people and lay your eggs in them. Um, and that'll just give a little bit more for that to attach to. Now, because you're using plastic um, glue, uh, that actually melts the plastic plastic glue, so it should be pretty secure once it's dry. But uh, that's an optional step. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it to make it a bit more snug. So I'm putting a, a generous amount of glue on the end there and then just placing that. It really just rests on top of the hole rather than goes in the hole. Um, make sure that your spine is sort of lined up relatively nicely and it's at the right angle. And then just hold that for a while until it dries. You can see I've got a nice angle from the spine coming down to where the tail starts. Now, plastic glue dries pretty quickly, but that is still very, very fragile. So I want to hold it up like this, so gravity won't pull it down. If I can hold it like that for a while until it dries a bit more, that's going to be good. Alternatively, I can get my sprue like this, and I can balance it in the sprue, like so. And that'll just sit there uh, with gravity helping the tail to sit there and dry. And you want to make sure that's thoroughly, thoroughly dry and that the melted plastic is fused together because that really is the most brittle part of the model. Do that for the rest of the tails and the aliens are done. Right, and here's our finished four uh, aliens. Uh, rinse and repeat four times and you'll have your 16 aliens. Now you really want to let those um, tails dry because they are fragile, but hopefully the plastic glue will fuse them together. 
Again, you don't have to drill uh, the hole there to make it a bit bigger. It's not necessary. They will still fit in as long as you're using plastic glue and they fuse together. I just did that to make the bond a little bit stronger. But they are a little bit fragile, those tails, so as I said, make sure your glue is really, really dry. And I'd, I'd even let it sort of dry overnight or something before you start priming these and painting them just in case. There they are. And when they're all done, you have a lovely swarm of aliens. With all those tails getting in the way of each other, it's going to be interesting on the board. They're probably going to bump into each other like you wouldn't believe. But hey, aliens have got to have big tails, don't they? I mean, that's part of the thing. There they are. Next, I'm going to move on to the ultimate... Oops, don't do that. That's a silly idea. <laughs> Let's just carefully... Ah, there we go. Ultimate badasses or badasses, if you're American, um, expansion. I've already cut out these pieces and cleaned them up, and you can see they're sitting on the little diagrams of each one. But these are all pretty straightforward. Uh, they're pretty much like the core set. There's even a super easy one, Burke, which is just a one-piece figure just going on his base. He's very easy. We've got here uh, a Marine. It is Trevor Verzbalski. And he is just a two-piece model, got a little bit of glue down the side there. And we just attach his side. Very easy indeed. And then he'll go on his base. We've got Private Tim Crow. He requires a bit of glue on his arm and torso. And then this piece goes in there. Super easy. Private Mark Drake is a four-piece one. We've got a left arm here. And there's a little square nub there that should line up nicely. There we go. The arm is sort of pointing up like so. That fits in nicely. And then we get this smart gun. And this attaches down on the right. And let's see how this works. That looks, there we go, there we go. So just really a bit of glue on the right fist and a little bit of glue on the piece that I just attached before and it really just fits in there quite nicely. Here he is holding his smart gun. And then a little bit of glue on his neck and he is facing towards the right. There we go. Sometimes fingers are just too big for these tasks but it, it does just pop into the right spot there. And there he is. That looks good. Got Sergeant Al Apone. He is very simple. We're just going to pop his head on there. Facing towards the right. And his head just pops on there and he's facing strongly towards the right. Like so. Then finally, Cynthia Dietrich. And a bit of glue on her right wrist and left wrist. And also in that little hole in the center. And then you take the flamethrower and if you put the slot in the hole, everything else lines up nicely. And finally her head goes on her neck. Also facing towards the right. Where are we? There we go. There she is. I'll just pop those on the bases and they'll be done. And there they are, the ultimate badasses. Very easy to put together, that took no time at all. Okay, we've got one expansion left to do and that's get away from her, you bitch. Let's get onto that. So now I'm doing get away from her, you bitch and it's very straightforward. Um, I just filmed this and then realized I didn't have the camera on so I do apologize for that. But this figure, the halved bishop figure, just sits right onto the base. There's a nub there that sits on. The other bishop figure is just as easy. It's a single figure on a base. The only slightly more complicated one out of the main figures is the enraged Ripley. And for this one, you attach the two halves of this gun together. There's a guiding hole for that. Then you attach that whole piece to Ripley's right shoulder. And then you attach Newt's leg. And stick all that to the base and it's done. It's very easy to put together and you get this lovely figure. So I've got two more to go, which are a little bit more complicated, and that is the power loader and the queen. And all of these bits of the power loader, 
and all of these bits of the Queen. Let's get started. Assembly of the power loader comes in three steps. Uh, there's three little sub-assemblies. And actually, this is one of those interesting things because uh, Ripley is inside this uh, roll cage and uh, it might be a bit tricky to paint when she's in there, I uh, may consider doing this in sub-assemblies and painting it first. Let's see how we go. Here's part seven, was the, which is the back of the, of the roll cage. This piece here attaches to that. So get a bit of glue, whack that in. Just hold that tightly because it's not the best fit. Ah. So we've got this piece and then I am going to attach Ripley. Uh, there's a hole in the middle there and she just has a piece in the back and it just goes into that slot. And then I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, there is a roll cage that goes on top like so, but I'll leave that off until I've painted this piece. And then I can just, as a last thing to do, I'll put the roll cage over the top of it. But leaving it like this will make it a lot easier to paint. On the roll cage itself, there's a little nub on the side and this tiny piece attaches to that. There's a hole there, like so. The next part are the two legs. Got this piece here, this is piece number one. And a bit of glue on that side. And piece number three fits onto that, like so. And then the bottom curved bit here fits into the leg. Like that. Make sure you've got the right numbered pieces. And then we do the same for the other leg. And that's the two legs. Now I usually clean uh, it piece by piece, but the other alternative is to wait until everything's put together until you clean off plastic nubs and mold lines. Um, you can do that as well. It really, as long as the plastic nubs don't get in the way or are difficult to get to them later, um, you can build the whole thing and do the cleaning afterwards. Now finally we're going to put the rest of the bits together. Okay, so these are all the pieces. Here's the main body of the loader, so we turn that around and then we get this large arm and it fits into that slot there. So it fits there and then the hand attaches there. So, there and there. Pop that into there, hold that in place. Like so. Now this is quite fiddly so I'm going to let each piece dry before I do the next bit. Just so nothing falls apart on me in the middle of construction. And the other side does a very similar thing. That bit there and just the, the hand. So that goes into there. Oops, the top hole. And I put glue on the wrong side of the hand. It actually goes on the top there. There we go. Slot that in. Let's make sure that's sitting flush and the hand is attached to the arm as well. So Ripley's hands are attached to both of the loader arms very nicely. Looks like this loader arm or the claw slips into there. So let's give that a bit of glue and slot that in. Presumably I can spin that around at any angle I want really, but I'll, uh, I'll keep it relatively straight. There she is, looking fantastic in the loader, that's great. Next up I've got this tiny little back piece, and that goes in this slot here. A bit too much glue there, I'll wipe the excess off. That slot's in there. And then we've got a slightly tricky three-part join here. It'll go resting on there and attaching to there and there. So let's make sure the bottom of this is flat. You can see I hadn't shaved off a little knob there and that's got to be flat. Attach it first to this piece. And a little glue will go in there and there. And then hopefully this should fit rather cleanly. Which way around is it now? The short piece is on the left. Oh, this is tricky. There you go. Oh, this is this is quite tricky here. 
There we go, that slots into there. That should slot into there. You might need another little tool just to help you here. There we go, that slots into there. And then make sure it's resting on the base. Again, a little tool needed to push it forward. There we go. Make sure that's all sitting correctly. So that is probably the most fiddly bit in the entire base game and two expansions. Let's make sure everything's sitting in the right spot. It's kind of a bit flexible, so probably best to make sure you know this bit isn't completely dry when you put this in because you want a little bit of give there. There you go. Just be careful with that piece. It's quite fiddly, but it fits together pretty cleanly. And there she is. Now I'm definitely going to let that dry before I put the feet on. I'm about to put on the legs and it's interesting to see that um, because they go on these two little nubs here, that if you've actually built it to this point, that this gets in the way of putting on the legs. So it really should specify in the instructions the, leg go, the legs go on first. So be careful with that. Um, this still isn't completely dry yet, so I've discovered that before it's completely dry, so I can bend it out of the way a bit. But make sure you put the legs on first, and um, yeah, that really should be in the instructions, instructions, because if you're going to block access to putting on a piece, then obviously you have to put this piece on first. So work out which is your left and which is your right leg. So I'm going to put some glue on the nub, and then I'm just going to see if I can just squeeze it in there without damaging everything. There we go. And there's only one angle it can go in. There it is there. And then the bottom of Ripley's leg will glue into the top of her foot, like so. Yeah, so I would definitely re recommend doing this um, before you attach the arms. And while I'm here, I'll do the other one as well on the nub and on the bottom of the foot. Carefully squeeze that in there. Oh, I don't want to stuff anything up. There we go. Find the right angle. There it is. And attach a foot. And I've just managed to get away with all that because I wasn't completely and utterly dry. Right. Well, that's a relatively complex little build. It's certainly nothing like Games Workshop figures, but it's slightly tricky, and certainly if you've never built these before, you'd find that a little bit challenging. Um, let's check this is all right. There we go. But it looks fantastic. Let's attach it to the base, and then we can let it dry. It's our base. Let's get that at the right angle, best angle. There we go, quite far back on the base as you can see, but if I had the right leg further forward, it should be unbalanced on the base. So there you have it. Very impressive figure, I mean there's a lot of detail there. Of course when this is painted I'll put the roll cage on front for that extra bit of detail. That'll just slot into these holes like so. Right now I've got all the pieces for the Alien Queen. Here's the head carapace and the head itself and we want to put it this way up and we've got the face is going to slot into there so let's put some glue there and slot in that head and then that whole piece goes onto there and general glue around there and it goes ah there we go oh nasty Look at that. Fantastic. Great headpiece there. Then I'll get these two body pieces. I do like this bottle of glue, but the brush doesn't actually go all the way down to the bottom, which is quite frustrating. Uh, these should fit together nicely, please. Why aren't they fitting? Oh, there we go. It's firm. Wipe off any excess glue. Now it looks like the head just pops onto there, so bit of glue there. And you can usually find with all these things that you just have to move it around until it feels like it's slotted into the spot. So 
that's the angle of the of the face and if you just move that around you'll find the right spot for it to be in make sure the face doesn't fall off just push that back in if necessary again you probably should let each bit dry before you do the next but I'm usually too impatient we've got some legs here and they've got feet so while I'm waiting I'll put these feet on Oops. Make sure they fit cleanly. Now there's this piece which goes into the back of the body. Just dry fit that first. Yep, that fits well. That sits in there. Alright, now I've got the Queen's body like this. I'm going to get the left hand arm and it's very easy, they've got nice big plugs and they just go straight in. And again, just move it around until it feels like it's in the right spot and it goes in fully. And same on the other side. You can look at the um, construction diagram to also get an idea of roughly where the arm should be. Now, the two back legs actually attach together like that so let's get glue and that's quite a big join there and it just pops together like that then that is going to slide in there's little there's a key lock as you can see that the, the uh, two parts of the key fit together which is good and put these together let's make sure I'm getting that right here we go now you can be careful here you don't there we go and, you know, even though I've said uh, wait till it's all dried, sometimes just before it's dried is a good idea because you may have to do a bit of shifting. For example, I had to push that arm forward just a little bit to get it to fit. So maybe just before it's absolutely solid and there's still a little bit of give, you might want to put the back in. This is a nice figure, but I feel, you know, to me it's a little bit small for the Alien Queen. I think the back area should be a bit larger. She looks... A little bit foreshortened but um, that's probably just practical reasons for that and then finally we've got a big tail here probably looks better with the tail but again I think the torso is just a little short and looking at the diagram we can see where that goes the spine should be facing upwards there it is very nice just like a slightly smaller version of the alien than I'd like. I mean, if you look at the scale in the films, she was certainly a lot larger than that. Um, but still, a nice figure and a pretty good interpretation of the Alien Queen. And certainly this head is the iconic bit, isn't it? Um, we've got a slot for the leg to go in. So that fits into that slot. So let's put some glue on the bases of the feet. And there she is. The Alien Queen. And I'm done. That's uh, built all the figures. That took a, a, a decent amount of time. Um, the Marine figures are pretty quick to do. The Aliens are a bit more fiddly and the Queen and, and the Loader are fiddly again. Um, but now that's all finally done so we're going to let all those thoroughly, thoroughly dry overnight. And then in the next video I'll be uh, priming these and painting them, showing you how to paint them up relatively quickly. I'm not going to go to a huge amount of effort. Um, they're still going to look great, but I'm not going to treat them like display pieces. They're gaming pieces. That's the way I paint all my figures. Um, but I think you'll still get some really good results quite quickly because I've painted some aliens before and I know a pretty quick technique to get them done and looking good. Um, but that's for the next uh, video or series of videos. I'm not sure if it'll be one or more videos. But for the moment, get your aliens figures built and uh, when they're built like this, you can still start playing the game and enjoying the game. I played it the other day and we had a great time. We had five people playing it. And we played the first mission and it was a lot of fun. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. This is the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. I'm Peter, also known as Universal Head. And you can find me uh, on my website, on Twitter. Not so much on Facebook at the moment. I've got some technical problems with that. Twitter is probably the best. Um, but I'm also on my Patreon channel. And if you have any comments at all, please um, put them in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer them. See you next time.